Put it, put it, <laughs> put it on. Wear your SPF, baby. Wear your SPF. Ooh, I forgot my sponge again. Oh my God, hold on. Oh, baby, come on. I'm a hustler, baby. What up, it's your girl, Minna. In this video, we are going to just be chit-chatting, trying out some new products. I am in my living room again. If you like this setup, I want you to comment and let me know. If you're in the US, join my text community. It's free and you can text me directly. It goes right to my phone. It is me. I also do random giveaways, so make sure you comment, stay engaged both here and on IG because you never know. Speaking of IG, make sure you follow there. Now we are zoomed way in, so also comment and let me know if you like the closeness of this video. So just let me know. If if you like to watch makeup videos where you are really close to the person's face and you can really see what's going on. And we're gonna jump right into the video. Okay, okay, okay. So, duck clips to put the hair back, obvi. And if you haven't already watched the video where I straight into this hair, <laughs> it's entertaining. All my videos are entertaining. If you are new here, that's just the name of the game. Uh, hello, we don't do boring. We don't do dry. We don't do dusty. We don't do old. We don't do any of that, okay? So I have already done my skincare. Skincare is always important. That is the first step before you do your makeup, make sure you do that. I'm gonna use the YSL Glow In Balm, which is a primer, right? It looks, the tube looks just like the actual tinted Juan Juan product. Now I do have on SPF, that's important. I know that even in 2022, many of us, especially black people or brown skin people, either they're misinformed or they just really believe, or let's say, I'm not gonna say we, cause I know I need SPF, but they just really believe that we do not need SPF. Every single person on this earth needs SPF. Obviously, if you have much fairer skin, you really, really need it. Your skin will burn, but for obviously my skin, it's not going to burn as easily, but that does not mean that I don't need SPF. You need it every single day. It doesn't matter if it's raining outside. It doesn't matter if you stay in the bed all day, you gonna open your blinds, right? Sun going, light going coming through that window. And even if it's not a sunny day, it's a cloudy day today, for instance, does not matter. You still need to wear SPF, okay? This looks good. This feels like a skincare product. I like it. I'm seeing a glow. So I like that. I don't want to be dry today. And I've never used this product right here, which is the Smashbox Halo Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. All right, so this is an ultra lightweight tinted moisturizer. It's infused with primer. I already have one primer. So it lasts all day. It primes, moisturizes, perfects, and protects. With, it has SPF 25 in it. Don't ever feel like because your foundation product or your moisturizer, tinted moisturizer product has SPF in it, so you don't need to put on your own SPF beforehand. Put it on, you know why? Because more than likely, you're not going to put on enough SPF in order to actually get the full coverage that the product states. So if you have an SPF moisturizer that is SPF 50, it's more than likely you're not gonna put on enough product to get the, the protection of that 50. So when you put on your SPF before you sit down and do your makeup, and then let's say you do use a product that has SPF in it, those two together will more than likely give you the amount of coverage that you're looking for that you need, okay? So do not just skip all that and think, oh yeah, this gonna hold me down, because more than likely you're not gonna take too much of this. It is a tinted product. So we're not gonna just goop this all over our face with four fingers and all of that. Like who's doing that, you know? Okay, so this is the shade deep. Let's see what we looking like. This looks like it's gonna match me. Oh dear God. Okay, well, it is a light coverage product. So maybe as I blend, it'll match. It's giving Jaclyn Hill bare blurred huang huang. Okay, so see how I didn't take very much on this side and it's blending, I took too much. And that's what I'm saying. If you're trying to get the full SPF 25 out of this, you're not going to, because you're going to need to apply a lot of this to get that. But because this is a tinted moisturizer product, you're not going to be applying it like I just did here. See, now we're spreading it all over. It feels like I'm putting on a lotion, honestly. This is light for the darkest parts of my face. So it's matching the middle of my face, not the darkest parts of my face. I can 
can see myself wearing this by itself, but we've talked about this. I would never just put on a tinted moisturizer and go about my day. I'd rather just have on my skincare and go about my day. I would not just put this on. You know what it is too, because if I don't have on a full face of makeup, then I know that I don't have on makeup. So if I'm just sitting there and I go like this on my face, I'm not gonna do it when I know I have on a full face. If I just do this, I'm gonna feel like, oh, I have nothing on. I might put my hand on my cheek and then next you know I have product on my hand and then that product is now on my clothes, on my tables, on my couch, what have you. So that is part of it too. It's just either full face or nothing, okay? Come in, let me know if you just be putting on, let's say a tinted moisturizer like this and then you go. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just, for me, it's not my preference. I wanna know what you do. Okay, now you know that I really take my skincare very seriously. So my skin is really, really good, baby. And I do have a prescription. I have rosacea, so there is some help there. With that said, I do not have dark spots except on my chin because I be getting breakouts, the hormonal breakouts on my chin, okay? So I'm saying that because this is light coverage and it looks really, really good on my skin. I don't have dark spots to cover. Even on the chin, I feel like it covered it fairly well, but obviously I can still see it. Now, if you have dark spots on your cheeks, forehead, anywhere else, chin, and it's very, they're very dark because there are different levels to dark spots, right? It could be almost going away, so it's not too dark. It can be like fresh and it's real dark. Either way it goes, this may not be the product for you because it's giving lightweight coverage. It's a tinted moisturizer for God's sake, but there are some tinted moisturizers that are giving medium coverage, baby. I wouldn't call this medium. I would say more on the light side. Let's darken this up with an actual foundation. I'm gonna give this away because I'm not the kind of person to use a colored primer. I'd rather use a clear primer. So a primer that's not gonna give me color because what this is going to do is alter the shade of my actual foundation that I'm gonna put on right now. And I'm gonna make it work today because it's what I do. But on a day-to-day -day basis, that's not what I want. I don't wanna have to be over here playing matchmaker chemistry and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, because we need more coverage, I'm not going to go with the NARS Advanced Light Skincare Foundation that matches my skin tone because it's going to be too light because of what I have on right now. So I'm going to use D6, which is darker, but it still works on my skin. I love how some of you were like, oh my gosh, she's using D3, that's my shade. I know one of you said I should try D4. I'm gonna stick with D3, which matches me perfectly. And then this is D6, which is darker. We're putting, I'm gonna do two pumps of this and spread it around. It's gonna be really dark, but we're gonna make it work, okay? I need to make my face darker because that color was too light. This is a flat kabuki brush from Sigma, in case you're wondering. I did do a review on this foundation, a first impression. I did a wear test too, so make sure you watch that video. I will link below for you. You see that? Now this is looking really good. It's not full coverage, but it still looks really, ooh. I'm looking so dewy in the middle of my face. Look at that, so beautiful, so healthy looking, just good. Oh, I have so been into a hydrated face lately, I've been into it. I did also recently try this Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics Perfecting Concealer. This is the color Deep Rich Golden. I do wanna bring some gold <laughs> to my face because uh, why not? I love the way a gold concealer looks. Now this is not too light. Oh, it looks light on the, on the camera but it's not too light in person. Either way, it's gonna go really, really well. Let me blend this fast. Whew. Now my sponge is damp, but you have to watch my video on makeup sponges to ensure that when you are dampening your sponge, it's actually damp and not just wet on the outside. Oh my God. Now I know some folks had some issues with this concealer and that was the reason why I was like, oh my God, I need to run and get my sponge because this was drying more than I ever let it do because people had issues with it, honey, but thank God it didn't do me wrong just now. I think it looks good. All right, so Milk Makeup sent this in PR. This is the Bionic Bronzer, and I think the color is called Invincible. All right, so this color is really pretty and I like how thick the product is. In fact, it's not running at all. So if you are lighter than I am, then you are gonna like this product. I, where's it at? I have the color, I think the color is called Invincible. So I like the color itself. It's not a contour, obviously. Bronzer is to give warmth to the skin, but I can't lie. This color is so dark. It looked like it was gonna be a contour for me, but it is my face color. It is the sh kind of shade that I would use as a dark color on my face, like what I put on today 
day. As you can see, this is the side where I put the bronzer, right? I don't see much. A little bit of a contrast right here in a good way, but it looks just like my skin right here because I have on foundation, I get that. But this area, I have not put anything on. Remember, we did the reverse contour, so we did a highlight. We highlighted here, highlighted here. It isolates the area that has not been touched, meaning that it makes it look like I already have a contour on and I don't. So when you look at this side compared to this side where I put the bronzer, there isn't a difference except this is just spread out more. So I'm gonna give this away because the shade is not dark enough, but I do like the product. So if you've used it, I want you to comment, let me know. If you plan on using it, also let me know. But to make my face symmetric, I'm going to apply the product on this side so stuff doesn't look strange. And you see, it, it looks like it could be my foundation color, you know? Blending with the Sephora 56 brush, which is the brush that I always use for my contour product. And you could use this for foundation too, but you know, I like to get bigger areas. So I use a different kind of brush for the foundation. I mean, it looks good, but I'm just, it's not, when I wanna do my contour, I contour more than I bronze, right? When I wanna do my contour, I want it to be dark right away, blend, let's get this show going. I wouldn't ever do this and then put a contour on top. Today, I'm gonna stick with just this and then use my powder that I'm using as a contour because I know there's a difference. We've discussed terminology, terminology before. I'm gonna use the powder that I'm using as a contour to deepen this out. I'll show you in a second, okay? So here we go with this, just blending the harsh lines, taking leftover product from this brush to contour my nose, but really I'm trying to bank on the leftover product from the last time that I used this because this milk makeup product isn't dark enough. So you see how we are still getting something on my nose here, which is great. This is Huda Beauty Banana Bread. I have ventured back in to setting my highlight with my sponge. So let's do that today. I was reminded about how pretty, well, not pretty girl, it's just how easy because the product be getting on my contacts. Uh oh, I gotta look down to get this. This is already starting off bad. <laughs> the product be getting on my contacts and I hate that. So I wanna use the sponge again to help alleviate that. Now, the thing about the sponge that I'm sure no one is telling you is that you want the product to melt into the sponge and then melt into your face. This way, you're not putting too much of the product on your face. So when you put it onto the sponge, give it a few more presses into either the cap of the product itself or into your tissue right in front of your paper towel, whatever you're using. Give it a few presses and then press it onto your highlighted areas. This way the product is has melted into your sponge a little bit before you apply it. That way it doesn't get caked up on your face. You're still gonna get the setting that you want, but you're not gonna get it caked up on your face. And then feel free to go over over the spot a few times as well. You may see people who are leaving it very white or very light on their face. If you're beginning, honey, don't be trying to do that because when you go to wipe it off, it might be too much for the kid. So go over it a few times to really get it to melt into your skin. Don't forget to get the side of your nose when you are setting your under eye. The whole idea of bringing the concealer down to the side of the nose, when did that become a thing? Was that like five years ago? I don't know. You may or may not do that right now. But as you can see, every time I do my face, I'm bringing it down the side of my nose because that's going to elongate the nose and make it look really pretty and snatched if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, just highlight your face, your under eye and ignore the nose and keep it pushing. But it's not gonna look that cute. It's not gonna look as cute as it could. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to give you the whole background so you can really snatch it up, you know? Cause you need to be able to snatch it up. You know? Okay, so there's that. And then like I said, uh, we're gonna fix this, don't worry, because we're gonna do face powder. Watch my video on face powders to understand why I even use a face powder. What is a face powder? The whole shebang. This is the NYX Cosmetics Mattifying Powder that I'm using as a contour. Okay, see how that already picked it up. Now we're getting contrast between the contour and the highlight. So under my chin is looking real, you know? And I like that. That, you know, I like that face slimming effect. It's the 59 brush or whatever going. I like to start at the edge of the face first because the first place that you press down your product is going to give you the most amount of pigment. And then I always tap off, even though this is a pressed powder, pressed meaning it's compact, it's not loose. You know, this is a loose powder because it's looks like 
you know, like sugar, explaining it because I can assume that you know what that means. Okay, and then I'm going up on the side of my face, looking very, very lovely. And I used to do this, but I stopped and I'm feeling a little froggy today. So taking a little bit of the powder and just right here, when we do the brows, this is really gonna look pronounced and like pretty. It just makes a small difference. Makeup artist trick, honestly. I used to go down the nose, but that'd be too much. It be too much, so we ain't gonna do too much. And then we gonna do our face powder. I do have this powder from Pure Cosmetics. This is a four in one pressed mineral makeup. It has SPF 15 in it. The color is Coffee DPN4. Now it's looking real light. That ain't how it looks in person. You understand? You have to understand the settings on the camera and stuff. It ain't that light in person, okay? But it is light. No matter what, I keep my face powders essentially on the areas that I highlighted because I want my contour to stay a contour. I want it to stay the way it looks. This brush is complex culture. I know y'all be coming for the neck. This is a very fluffy, gorgeous brush that I love to use for my powder. It needs to be washed. We'll get to that one day. Focusing the powder on the highlighted areas and that is going to really bring everything in together. Although now that I see the application on the chin, uh, I gotta change this because this is not dark enough. Do you see how light that applied? When I apply my face powder, it does not do that because it's not light. It is darker. So this color is too dark. Ooh. You know what, to give the symmetry, listen, correct your face, protect your neck. Take some more and just make the other side look the same, baby. <sighs> make it look the same, baby. It ain't a good thing, but make it look the same, baby. Okay, now let's go with what I know. What I know is that my Fenty Pro Filter 450 gonna get me together. This might look light, but it works. It just, it works. At first, when this came out, I was like, what? But it does work, you know? And don't forget, we use a light primer thingamajiggy before. So the face is just, it's, it's real like, car seat right now. I don't know what that means. I just said it. It's just, it's very questionable right now. You know, like car seat installed and not checked by the fireman. And we're gonna just make it. We gonna make it do what it do right now. I'm gonna make it do what it do, baby. Go down the chin and the jawline to make sure that there are no harsh lines. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of our blessing and honor and glory? We are chilling today. I almost started singing, I shot the sheriff, hey, but I didn't shoot the deputy, hey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so to highlight now, we are going to, um, it's been a minute since I've had these. I meant to use it, don't fight me, you know what I'm saying? This is a Fenty Beauty Liquid Kilowatt full of freestyle highlighter. Yep, we got Honey Hottie, Honey ho, 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 how do you say that? Honey Hottie, ho, cause I wanna say Hottie, but it ain't Hottie, is it Howdy? It ain't Howdy, I can't do it. And then we got this other one right here. Hustler baby, I'm a hustler baby. Girl, we are acting out. In this video. This is very golden, not my C's. This is silver. So this is warm and this is cool. I like to go cool, okay? So cool, it has more of a silver in it. Warm, it's more golden, orangey, right? I like to go more cool. So I'm gonna start off with this one. This is Hustler Baby 2.0, baby. Hustler Baby 2.0, number three. Because you know I usually like to do my other stuff, but let's do something different today. I'm taking some on the finger. Ooh, already looking pretty. Back of the hand to blend it all out. You gotta shear it out a little bit. Don't, yeah, this is looking good. This is looking just like the rare beauty color. This might be my new one. Black on. Oh, what am I doing? Hold on. I do not use my hands. I can't. Uh -uh. I do not use my finger. Hold on. Where's the sponge? Okay. This is looking really good. I like this a lot, but I just had to pause because it's not as frosty the snowman as the rare beauty one is, but it is a black owned option. So I got to keep it real because. It's just not giving as much highlight as the Rare Beauty one. Oh my God, but it is nice though. Listen, if you wanna sign me for a record deal, slide in my email because I got borders that dried too fast right there. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> it does look good, baby, but I feel like Rare Beauty is a little more frosty, but this gonna be backup number two. Do I like it? Have you tried this? Let me know. if. So what shade have you tried? 
this gold, this warm one, the number four, honey, haughty. It's not haughty, haughty, howdy. You don't, you don't say it like that. H a w how howdy. It's ho I want to say haughty. It's haughty, right? Almost like saying toddy for the potty. Are you twenty for the party? I can't do it. Hi. You know, I have to say, I don't, I've, have I ever used a Wet n Wild palette? I believe I never have. So this is the first color I showed you. I haven't gone in with a brown one yet. And I am pleased. I'm pleasantly surprised because although there's a lot of fallout, this is common with even some high-end palettes. This color looks really good. I've never used Wet n Wild because they normally don't have stuff that matches my skin tone well enough. And I'm glad that I picked this one up because this is good. So if you've used Wet n Wild, I want you to let me know. And I like to flare out my crease color, as you can see, especially here with the highlight, I want it to all blend well together. I'm tapping off the excess on my paper towel in front of me and now blending lightly in the front to not wipe off my brows, but certainly to blend this into my crease. This is good. I like my crease to be warm and then I do something darker afterward. Now I was gonna use a different palette, but let me stick with this one because it is really pretty. So let's now see what we wanna do. I'm not sure. I'm gonna do a halo eye. I haven't done a halo eye in a minute. So get a flat, fluffy brush. It's, it, it looks crazy, but flat, but fluffy, you know? Any brush like this will do the job. Now taking that chocolate color that I showed you, patting it on the brush, always tap off the excess. And now we are applying. I like to start on the outer part of my eye like this and putting it down. It's looking light. It's really darker than this, a little. Let's turn down the light so you can really see this. See, it's looking darker. Let's go here on the inner part. We're doing a halo, halo, a halo, halo, halo. Ooh. Build up the density here and bring it into the crease because we want to open up the eye. Looking down is really important and just keep on pressing. I want to add some more, always tapping off the excess. And I do want this to come in the front of the eye right here because like, why not? And you just got to be careful with your eyelid shape because I'm doing this based on my eyelid shape, okay? I always stick with the regular old way of doing eyeshadow, which is lid, crease tear duct but i just keep forgetting that we can still do halo baby patting this right in here i know it's a chatty video thanks for watching it through and through honestly because y'all told me in a survey i did i asked my text community too and y'all told me you need the instructions it's entertaining and all of that we love it but you need the step-by-step -step instructions every single time because the repetition is key so i'm reminded i'm reminded so here we we are. Keep pressing it into both sides like that, okay? And with the light being lower, I know you're seeing the true color of this eyeshadow. Looking really good. Now, I'm just looking at it to see if they're even-ish. The middle, don't worry, we're gonna fix that, but you really wanna make sure you build up the side. Gotta need to that side and side, okay? Build up the side and side. Now, changing the brush to get something that's going to really fluff this out. Now, I could use a a smaller brush like this to get in there. But I was also gonna just use this one because I know how to finesse it, but I know that you may not know how to finesse it. So let me show you the easiest way to do it. Get a brush that's smaller in size. Why? Because you're going to tackle a smaller space. Do you see that? This brush is fluffier. So it's going to spread the product all the way down here. I don't want you to make mistakes. So take a smaller brush like this and I'm still using that brown, that chocolatey 
color, okay? Always tap off the excess, starting right here. Now we are connecting these two eyeshadow, like the two sections. We're connecting the halo, okay? Lightly, we're not pressing it into the face, lightly connecting the two. And do you see how even that first color is peeking through? I am liking this palette. Hold on, I am liking this palette. Wait a minute. Yo, wait and wow, mm, I stand corrected, baby. I mean, the face stuff don't be working for me, but this, oh baby, the eyeshadow palette, oh yes. I'm gonna take that first color, and just as a reminder, it's this color right here in my crease, and this is the color in the halo. So some of that first color, I'm just gonna go lightly right here in the transition between the crease color and my brow bone. I wanna warm that up, very light. We're not wiping the product, and I wanna lightly blend right here, do you see? I'm being very specific right now. I want it to look good. So just lightly right up in the yeah. And then some of the chocolate brown to make this darker, deeper, denser, okay? And we have a gradient ladies and gentlemen. So now with the light still dim, I added some of that first color, the warm one, right on the side and side of where the peekaboo was. And it gives it such a beautiful gradient. And I can't even lie, I am tempted to leave this just like this. Because usually you'd put a color in the middle and that color can be a frost, it can be white, it can be a light pink. But the reason why I'm not going to is because this is making my eyelid look really short because it stops right here. I want it to go up here. So this is what I will do. I'll take a light color from this palette. Let's go with this one because it's really, really light using my ring finger, okay? And I'm going to go here to open this up. So I'm bringing the peekaboo. I'm calling it peekaboo, honey, okay? Yeah, I'm glad I added something because look at that. This just making it look even better, baby, even better. I want it to go up. I need to open up the eye, okay? So all the way up there. And then we're gonna bring that gradient right on back, okay? But take your finger. This eye look really does take time, okay? We ain't doing no quick, you know, at the traffic light eyeshadow look for work, okay, baby? This ain't gonna be the one, all right? Praise the Lord for those of you who be doing that kind of stuff. It, it can't be me, you know? It cannot be me, but I'm just showing you something that you could really take your time and do. Change the colors if you want to. Look at the difference. Do you see that? We are opening up the eye. We don't want no small looking eye. We want it to be big. And even when you open your eyes, you can still see the peekaboo. So same thing on the other side, ring finger, tap, 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 and we are going up. Now I'm keeping it more in a vertical fashion, going up and down. And if you go too wide, like I just did because I'm talking so much, we are gonna fix it, so don't you worry. We are gonna close in on this to make it look more narrow, all right? But just getting that right in the middle and that looks so good. Just adding more of the product to lighten it up, okay? Now, this you might say, oh, it's perfect, you're done. Yeah, maybe, but I need to fix it, okay? It just needs to be perfected. Okay, taking that warm color at the top again, let's go ahead and get the transition again. Do you see that? Very lightly tapping off excess right up in here. Do you see? Do you see? Look, baby. Yes, uh, tap off the excess. Uh. We're gonna come back with that chocolate again too. And just right up top here, just a little smidge, nothing big. We really could have made this. There are so many different things we could have done to this, but I'm trying to go easy on y'all. Look it, now, now you might be like, oh, you're covering it again. I know, I know, I know. Let me slow down, let me slow down. Let me slow down, let me slow down. I'm taking a little bit more of the light color. I'm so annoyed. Listen, I like my stuff to look right, okay? So if you make a mistake and you close it on too much, take some more of the light color and go over it again, baby. One more time on this side. I just wanna open that up a little bit. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Let's stop, okay. Now, with the chocolate, more like the darker color, taking that just on the sides again, because I want that to still be dark, it lightened up a little bit because of the warmer color that I used. Okay. This looks really good. Let me stop because I'm doing a lot, okay? Love that palette. Love to see it. Taking my Cinema Secrets brush cleaner in this little container. Clean off the brush, baby. And look, honey, it's basically clean. I can do a little more, but I don't got that much time. Now, you know I like to do my eyeshadow as eyeliner. It's just my thing, and it's easy. So any black eyeliner, stamp, stamp, stamp this on. Stamp and wipe, stamp and wipe. It just gives you a smudged eyeliner look really really easy and you are done 
honestly. All right, let's try a new mascara. We gonna be here all day, baby. Let's try a new mascara. This is Revolution Beauty. I'm like, what? Where's the name? It's not even on here. It's like so hidden. 5D Lash Pow Volumizing Mascara. What in the? Hey, the way you open this, like why? Why is it such a struggle? This wand is way too big and the product is not that phenomenal. The wand is just too, look at it, I just like got on my on my skin. The wand is too humongous for no reason. It's it's fine. I would give this a fair, maybe fair to, fair to good. It's not phenomenal and, and this is annoying me. Yeah, not a huge fan. Alrighty, if you've used that, let me know. I do wanna brighten my waterline. This is Charlotte Tilbury Liner Duo. This is the Brighten Illuminer. Illuminer? Or is that another word for brightener? No, that's the word because <laughs> the other side says Enhance Magnifier, it's brown. And then this side says Brighten Illuminer. Illuminer, is that a word? Is Illuminer a word? No, it's not. You better, you better stop. This is requiring far too many passes to get the product off. It looks really pretty, but it's requiring too much. Maybe because it's new, but it shouldn't be. It's a creamy stick. So why is it requiring so much? Why do I have to go over it so much to get the color out? So I took the brown side to go underneath the eye. It's a cool brown. It's not warm, so it's not giving me much orange or orange at all looking more gray, which is fine because I am gonna take the eyeshadow colors and bring them down to the bottom part of my eye. So here's that first warm color. You could halo under the eye, but come on now, I'm not doing that. And let's connect it way back here. And then that darker color, going right over that to deepen everything up. All right, we got Lawless One and Done under the eyes, my favorite to date. Although, YSL did send me their new mascara. I'm gonna try that another time. I forgot to grab it. Let me take my contour brush. What I use for my contour and just go over this with leftover product to try to diffuse <laughs> the line, but you know, whatever. We did put on makeup today. This is not the playhouse. This is not the schoolhouse. Eyelash glue was I envy kiss the whole shebang. Okay, let's do Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Intense 3 as a liner. Bring it in because we're gonna ombre. And then I'm gonna use this new lipstick that I haven't used. I don't think it's not that new. This is Urban Decay Eternals. This is from the Marvel collection. The color is Ancient. This is hydrating because I put it on my hand first. Nice and moisturizing. Oh yeah, lovely. I'm putting a lot because I want it to be dewy, juicy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is cute. What do we think, queens? Let me know. I love the look, lots of faves. Some things that just didn't work out as you saw in the video. I want you to stick around because if you watch this to the end and that means you opt in a kid, if you feeling a kid, I got two videos linked for you. Make sure you watch one of those. Text me, subscribe, comment below. And as always, I'm glad that you watch my videos, honest to God. And I want to see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye.